Let's catch up with 5AA Breakfast Radio host in Adelaide and writer for the Australian and other News Corp papers, David Pemberthy. Always good to catch up with you, Pembo. Uh, look at you, a Sturt supporter. I'm a Sturt supporter. Phil Curry, when has television ever before in national politics had three Sturt reporters in the one program? Uh, we're going to start on footy, show. though. At, at, it's got to be a good show. Let's talk about footy and the, 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 the Andrew Thorburn case and religious freedom and tolerance in this country. And I, I want to start with the AFLW because, of course, there's a Muslim player in the AFLW, Hanin Zrika. She wouldn't play in the Gay Pride round last year. She's going to sit it out again this year. She'd be happy to play just in the normal Guernsey. doesn't want to wear the Pride Guernsey. Now, the club and the AFL say, no, if you're not going to wear the right Guernsey, you sit it out. Surely that's the way it should be. It's her choice, her beliefs. She's not trying to hurt anybody. She steps out. Uh, game over, isn't it? Everyone goes about the game and, and, and we show a bit of tolerance and diversity. Have, have I got that right or have I got that all wrong? Well, look, I would have thought so, Chris, but I think that what we're seeing here is the, the AFL has tied itself into ideological knots, I think, by, by spending too much time hitting refresh on Twitter to see what people are saying about it. And, you know, yeah. I, 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 wonder, I wonder whether so much of the sort of inconsistency with its positioning, or, or certainly what we've seen this week with, with Andrew Thorburn is a glaring inconsistency and it's not just the female player from Greater Western Sydney, but it's it's also the uh, total totally mishandled furor over the rainbow jumper that was going to be worn by the Manly Sea Eagles, where the, yep. the manner in which that was handled so badly by the club, there were seven Islander players who, who didn't feel like, for religious reasons, they should be forced to take part in this. Um, the thing that I find weird, though, is that Thorburn effectively gets told that he's got no alternative but to resign and to actually be drummed out of the game in any way, shape or form on account of his private religious views. Yet, um, I don't think any of these players are going to lose their jobs. And I'm not saying that... I'm not saying that they should. The problem for me is that, as a Christian... Thorburn pays the ultimate price, whereas th there seems to be two sets of rules. When it comes to anything involving multiculturalism, the progressive position is, well, look, you know, we're all in favour of LGBTIQ, et cetera, but then the moment a Muslim person or an Islander person says, I've actually got qualms with that, the, the, the progressive position is, oh, well, it's complicated. But if you're a Christian, and, and bear in mind, Thorburn never said anything publicly. In fact... The thing is, no. the comments he backed over weren't even made by him. But if it's a if it's an issue that touches on multiculturalism, the position is it's complicated. But if it's an issue where a Christian has got views, albeit private views, that they're not even going to pursue in their new uh, short-lived job as CEO of the Essendon Football Club, the position when it comes to him is, mate, you're gone. Now that is a massive double standard by anyone's. Language, I would have thought. Well, it absolutely is, especially when you think this bloke's record in business has been to champion diversity and tolerance. Uh, in fact, uh, he was leading the NAB when they started sponsoring the, the Pride Round and, and the rest of it. And, look, it, it gets so twisted here because uh, let, let's just see what Daniel Andrews, the Premier of Victoria, said today, and I'll reflect on it. Have a look. I'm not here to be having a debate with faith leaders, but I, 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 I will just say this. I'm a Catholic... I send my kids to Catholic schools. My faith is important to me. It guides me every day. But it also guides me in my sense of what is right and what is wrong. And if I can just say with utmost respect, calling out homophobia is not the problem. Homophobia is the problem. See, the issue here, Pembo, is that he's saying Thorburn can't be tolerated because the church he belongs to says homosexuality is a sin, therefore it's homophobic. But the church Daniel Andrews belongs to says homosexuality is a sin. So yeah. is he not entitled to his job? I mean, don't we have to be adults well, about this? 100%. I mean, if, if you're not allowed to 
be the head of a major organisation anymore because you're uncomfortable with homosexuality and you're opposed to abortion, somebody better tell the Pope quick, Smart. Um, in, indeed, casting your mind back to 1986 when there was a papal visit to Australia, you wonder even in the cl current climate whether people would be saying that Alard Novak Djokovic is, he, is the pontiff necessarily a fit and proper person to, to be granted a visa. But um, here's, here's a point, though, for, for people like Dan Andrews, I'm not totally across the um, factional uh, uh, makeup of the Victorian Parliament being, being an Adelaide-based, ex-Sydney-based journo. I do know that it was the, the spiritual home for a long time of Joe de Bruin. But I can think of current members of the South Australian Malinowskis government who are in Cabinet, and I can also think of uh, at least three, probably more members of the Albanese front bench who are definitely opposed to abortion and who are probably no voters when it came to the question of same-sex marriage. Now, are those people unfit to be ministers of the Crown on account yeah, of their... It gets ridiculous, doesn't it? Yeah. You've got to respect or, their, you've got to respect people's beliefs. Uh, I, I, I'm going to cut you off, Pemba, because I've got to get on to something else, finish on a lighter note. And you wrote brilliantly this week about whether Australians have lost their sense of humour, partly based on how people reacted to this from the victorious Geelong footballers. Uh, if you rock up on a Monday morning after a game, that's generally how most of us move. So, um, yeah, it's good fun. Too old, too slow and too good. <laughs> Look, it was funny stuff from Geelong, who uh, critics said were too old and too slow. They turned out to be too old, too slow and too good. But have a look at Ian Henschke, who heads up Seniors Australia, and what he said about this. He said they were clearly putting out a stereotype. You can have a bit of fun, but you've also got to think about how you portray people. Really, having a joke about being old footballers is now what? It's now beyond us, Pembo, as you wrote this week. It's ridiculous. I think one of those great warning signs is whenever you hear people say, don't get me wrong, I like a good laugh as much as the next man. Invariably, <laughs> yeah. the bloke who says that has never actually laughed in his life. And I think, sadly, for Ian, with those po-faced comments, he falls into that category. Yeah, I think you've got to be able to have a laugh. But our senses of humour have disappeared. We've all got to check ourselves against all the woke edicts and who we might offend before we crack a joke. I dare not crack any on this program. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Pembo. I appreciate it. David Pemberthy there. You can listen to him hosting Breakfast with Will Goodings on Radio 5AA in Adelaide every weekday morning. You can read him in The Australian and also in the News Corp tabloids. I want to have a look at what you've had to say about our discussion on this program about the Andrew Thorburn affair over the past couple of days. And Dave says, absolutely nailed it in relation to my editorial on this topic last night. He said, I too don't agree with the views of his church. However, this to me seems like religious persecution. And then we can go to another viewer who says, it's interesting to note that the same culture war warriors don't go after other religions. This is exactly the point. If what happened to Thorburn had happened to a Muslim leader or a Hindu leader, there would quite rightly be hell to pay and I would suggest legal interventions. Alan says, Chris, are they going to get rid of of all Christian players as well. That's right, the AFL would be full of Christian and other people of faith in their playing ranks and, of course, in the administration of many clubs and at AFL headquarters as well. Imagine if they cleared out all the Catholics from the AFL. It is absurd. And Andy says this should be taken through the courts, if only to show that it is religious discrimination. Yeah, I think, uh, as Pauline Hanson and others have said, it would have been great to see Andrew Thorburn take this legal action, but he was stuck between two organisations he loves, his church and his footy club, and he decided to go quietly. It's not the last we've heard of this issue, that's for sure.